Okay, we're going to talk a little bit here about something called gravitational potential energy, or GPE, gravitational potential energy. And in order to do that, we're, uh, we're going to look at a particular scenario. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we have a shelf that is two meters high and we're going to take this object right here that has a mass of five kilograms and we're going to lift this object and set it up here on top of this shelf. Well, let's first of all take a look at the weight of the ball. That's important because in order to put the ball up on the shelf what we have to do is overcome the weight of the ball in order to move it that particular distance. So let's go ahead and calculate the weight of the ball. We know that the force of weight equals mass times gravity. We've talked about this equation before. And the mass, of course, is 5 kilograms. Gravity, remember, is 9.8 meters per second squared. And I only have one significant digit here. I'm going to round this 9.8 off to 10. So 10 times 5, well, that gives us a weight of 50 kilogram meters per second squared, or as you recall, a kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. So the weight of the ball is 50 newtons. Now that 50 newtons is the weight that we have to overcome and move through this distance of vertically, 2 meters, to put that ball up on top of the shelf. Well, that being said, keep this in mind. In order to lift that ball through that distance, we have to do some work. So we can go ahead now, we can calculate the work that we do to lift that ball vertically 2 meters and set it up on top of the shelf. And if you recall the work equation, work equals force times distance. In this case, the force is going to be the force of weight, because that's the force we're going to have to overcome to lift the ball, quite obviously. So, next step. The weight was 50 newtons. The distance moved, the vertical distance moved, is going to be 2.0 meters. And you can see that the work done is going to be 100 newton meters. And of course, we can express that as 100 joules because we know that a joule is the same as a newton meter. Now, a joule is not just the unit of work, it's also the unit for energy. A newton meter or a joule is the unit for energy. Think about why that happens. When we lift this 50 newton ball 2 meters, we have to burn some fuel. Every cell of our body that we're that is involved with the lifting is going to have to burn some energy and collectively they're going to have to burn and give up 100 joules of energy that we're literally giving to the ball in order to do that work to move it through that distance. So this is really, if you think about it, a, a transfer of energy problem. We're going to transfer energy from us, 100 joules of energy from the person that lifts the ball and then store that energy up here. Well, that stored energy is called potential energy. It's energy that when the ball is sitting up here, it's stored it's waiting to come back out. So let's calculate the gravitational potential energy. Well, the equation for gravitational potential energy is gravitational potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. And looking at this equation, if you look at just this part of it, you can see that that's mass times gravity. Well, mass times gravity is the weight of the ball. 50 newtons. So that is actually equal to 50 newtons right there, mass times gravity. And then the height is the 2 meters. So really, if you stop and think about it, this gravitational potential energy equation is really the weight or the force times the height, which is the distance, which is really the work equation. So gravitational potential energy is equal to the work done 
on the ball. So we're giving the ball 100 joules of energy to do this work and storing that energy by setting it up on top of the shelf and storing it as gravitational potential energy, energy that's stored, waiting to be used. So let's go ahead and solve the problem. The mass, remember, was 5 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the height, which is the distance, vertically, 2 meters. So the gravitational potential energy is 5 times, and remember I rounded that 9.8 off to 10, so 5 times 10, 50 newtons times 2 meters, that gives us 100 newton meters or kilogram meters per second squared meters or kilogram meters squared per second squared so that is 100 newton meters or 100 joules of gravitational potential energy stored by setting that ball up on top of that shelf now interesting thing to think about here is what happens when that ball rolls off the shelf. Well, when that ball rolls off the shelf, and we'll talk about this in the next video, when that ball rolls off the shelf, that gravitational potential energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy as the ball falls and its velocity increases. And then when the ball hits the floor, that energy is going to be released as sound and heat eventually that energy will appear as heat in the environment. It'll just go back to the environment as heat. So that's gravitational potential energy. That leads us to a very important understanding, and that is that the work done lifting an object to a particular height is equal to the energy that the object gains by being lifted.